iOS 9 doesn't have a ton of new major features, but there are quite a few little improvements that improve the OS overall. So in this video, we will show you some of the more notable changes and hidden features in iOS 9. First off is the addition of a new iCloud Drive app, and this allows you to access files that you have stored on iCloud Drive. By default, the app isn't on the home screen, but if it is an app you'd like to have, you can go into settings and turn the app on, and now you have access to all your files. The shift feature in iOS has always been a bit confusing when wanting to know if you have shift activated or not in the keyboard, but now it's much easier. When you click shift, now the letters on the keyboard will all capitalize, and once you click, they will go back to being lowercase. The battery has also received improvements. Now there's a low power mode that should give you up to an hour of extra battery. This can be turned on in the settings app under a new battery panel, and here you can also see a detailed app by app rundown of how much battery is being used. Also now in the notification center, there's a new battery widget that shows you how much battery is left on your iPhone, or if you have an Apple Watch, you can see it there too. Siri has some minor improvements as well. Now the design looks a bit more like on the Apple Watch, and you can also have Siri be muted when you mute your phone. The mute switch can also act as a lock rotation switch now, similar to how it was on the iPad. Along with the new wallet app, Apple Pay can now be accessed from the lock screen by double clicking on the home button. Here you can see your wallet and choose a different card if you want and make a payment quickly. The mail app can now access and attach files from iCloud Drive right from the mail app, and you can also send more than 5 photos from the photo app, so now you can send as many photos as you like. One major change in iOS 9 is links to go back to the previous app you were in. So if you're in an app and click a link to take you to another app, there will now be a button in the upper left corner and it will take you back to where you were. Find My Friends and Find My iPhone are now default apps that are pre-installed, and there's also a notification center widget for Find My Friends. Some of the smaller changes and tweaks include more passcode options, one for a six digit code instead of a four digit. There's also now the option to select different recording resolution and frame rates from settings. Also in settings, you can now search for what you're looking for, and in the podcast app, there's now a section to show you all the unplayed podcasts you have. Notifications can now be grouped by apps, and this is controlled from the notification settings. The iPhone 6 can now see contact photos and messages, which was previously only available on the 6 Plus. The health app now has a landscape mode that can show graphs of health data, and in the keyboard, there's a separate section for flag emoji. In Safari, there's a new setting for content blockers, which suggests developers could create extensions that block content like ads. You can also request the desktop version of a site right from a share sheet, and in Safari, there is now an iBooks extension that can save out a website as a PDF. Finally, is that there's a new system-wide font that replaces Helvetica Noia, it's called San Francisco, and this is a font developed by Apple and is used on the Apple Watch, iOS, and OS X. So, those are some of the smaller features and additions to iOS 9. It's in beta right now, so things could change or be added before the final release in the fall. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and visit MacRumors.com for more. My name is Matt with MacRumors, and we'll see you in the next one.